Uh, hi everyone, and um, thanks for attending this evening on this um, anniversary, this Bitcoin birthday, 10th birthday. And uh, it's great to see you all here. And I've met many of you, and lots of different interests, and lots of different reasons for being here, so it's great. So obviously whoever speaks is not going to please everybody, but it's about the Bitcoin 10th anniversary. So we've had 10 years, uh, today's the anniversary of the first block. So we had the 10th anniversary in November, which was of the white paper, which must have taken off quickly because by now they'd done the first block. So, so it's, the, it's the 10th anniversary of the first block and we plan to run this event every year. So this is the first of an annual event of the anniversary of the first block, okay? Thank you. So, so every year we're hoping it's gonna get bigger and bigger and we'll have sponsors for pizza and beer by then, I'm hoping as well. <laughs> okay, so I just want to say something really briefly about what it felt like in the beginning. Um, I wasn't there right in the beginning, but from sort of 2012, 13, you know, when people were talking about this new innovation, this rival to what's probably the most influential um, monopoly in the world of finance, you know, I think it's fair to say, and there was a potential rival in the world for that. And so a lot of people got interested in the very beginning, and that was what it was about. And price didn't really come into play because, although it was obvious the price would increase at some point if you believed in the technology, that wasn't the first and foremost thing that people got involved in. And that's where it began. And I think that was why it began. That was the roots of it, and why so many people got so interested in it, and it was so successful originally. And then, as time moved on, I think probably there was a, a lot of influence from those who had the monopoly, and it kind of, there was a reframing on what Bitcoin was about. And it became a bit of a dirty word, you know, um, as we're all aware. And so the whole narrative sort of was redirected to the technology behind it, the blockchain and the prospect of smart contracting, and pretty much just innovating or iterating the existing infrastructure. You know, so it's kind of a turn. So people don't really think about, a lot of people don't really think about that original idea so necessarily so much anymore. But what we've seen over the period is a lot of innovators, kind of first principle thinkers, people who are not looking to sort of iterate but really innovate, thinking about things from the, from, you know, probably thinking about things, not faster horses but cars, that kind of thing. We've got a lot of those that I've met in the group who've come up with some fantastic ideas. And I think along the way in the past that I've seen, I've had experience with myself working with teams, but I've seen that we've been stifled sometimes. Um, innovations get stifled because of the existing infrastructure and they're kind of, um, they don't really want to, they're not enthusiastic about making a rod to beat themselves with, I suppose is a fair way of saying it sometimes. They're not looking for rivals, they're really looking to continue what they've got. And so, but I've seen that, and now I've seen something different. What we're seeing is kind of where some people within those structures, those who are not really at the top, so they may be lower politicians or they may be just people interested in community projects and doing things, they've seen the benefits that blockchain and, and Bitcoin and different, you know, maybe even funding public, you know, those kinds of ideas, they can bring so much potentially to communities, to Wales, to individual countries. And I think that the countries are recognising that if they don't accept and embrace the new technologies, that they're going to miss out because they're not stuck in one place. You know, if somebody's got a problem with doing business here, they can, they can go somewhere else and do business. And <coughs> so consequently, we'll be stuck then iterating their things. I, I'm speaking from a perspective of Bitcoin Wales, not as, you know, so from a Welsh perspective on Bitcoin and the new technologies coming through from there. So what our group, um, we're trying to do, because it's not just me, there's about five of us, I, I didn't, most of this is other people arranging and organising everything else. But what we plan to do in this new year is we want to become known more as uh, a platform, we've got a website being, being launched, a platform though for innovators to come so we can link each other up. We've always wanted to be that, but we're getting more focused now and we've got a lot more links and contacts, including we've got a great speaker coming in later who's connected to the Welsh Government talking about these kinds of things as well. So we really want to position ourselves as a kind of a platform where we can bring in members, we can say, oh yeah, you, you're talking about fast payments. Well, they're interested in fast payments, why don't you talk to them and that kind of a thing. So it's linking people up and we're becoming kind of, coming kind of a hub for crypto. And it's not just Bitcoin, it's all different cryptos and all different innovations, which is fantastic. So I'm really pleased with where we've come. We've only been doing this for five years. It's our fifth anniversary in December, but Bitcoin for 10 years has come a really long way. It's brought a load of other stuff with it as well. 
So we're looking at fantastic times in the future. I couldn't predict what could happen, but it's going to be the first principal thinkers that will be making that happen, regardless of the obstacles that they get faced on a regional basis, these people are going to move and do it, it's going to come through. So if we're going to be a part of that, we need to recognise it, embrace it and do the same thing, I think, as a country and as individuals working together. So with that in mind, I'm going to introduce you now to a first speaker. Um, it's a great guy, he's been running uh, Bitcoin Swansea very successfully for a while, took over when it was going to nothing, and it's a great atmosphere then that if, if, you, if you want to go attend another group, please keep an eye on it because they do advertise, they've got to meet up and everything else. And um, he's looking at, diff I don't want to give too much of what you're doing away, but it's cracking stuff. So if I just introduce Rob from Bitcoin Swansea, is that okay? Because Rob's our first speaker. So please give a Johnson. I run the uh, Swansea Bitcoin group. I took over in February um, and lost all my money. So, <laughs> um, uh, I mean, yeah, so I've only been in Bitcoin for a couple of, you know, for the last nine, ten months or so. Um, I, uh, I was originally born in Singapore in 75. Uh, I've lived in Singapore, in Jakarta, in Indonesia and in Nairobi and Kenya, and uh, like many people here who uh, can see the massive benefits that crypto has to offer, we're especially with the low barrier to entry, um, with the legacy financial system that we have, you, there's a lot of prerequisites to enter that financial system, uh, such as providing um, home addresses, uh, passports, proof of identity, uh, but with crypto none of that exists. So um, one of the things I've been concentrating on uh, and I'm sure has been concentrated on in the past, but I thought I'd bring my experience of having lived abroad as an expat to it is uh, adoption of the third world. So this is my uh, presentation on um, uh, cryptocurrency adoption in remote communities. Um, so just to kind of give an overview of that, uh, I have uh, good friends that live up in, in Fika, in the northern district of Kenya. And up there, the people that live in the tea growing districts of Thika have absolutely nothing. And when I mean nothing, I mean places they don't sleep even under tarpaulin. You know, they, they work in the fields and they sleep where they can. It's an extremely impoverished life. And it's represented by many countries and continents around the world. A substantial amount of people with a very, very low quality of life. But they also have access to modern technology. So how do you do that leap? Um, from uh, the technology we have to people that have nothing but have access to that technology. Um, so my thinking was a lot of virtual companies such as uh, Just Eat and TripAdvisor have a physical presence and that's what cryptocurrencies need. Now that's come through in places like Shanghai and in China where they have QR codes, so they use QR codes of WeChat to exchange money. And my thinking was the same thing around cryptocurrencies with QR codes, but obviously taking that further. Um, if you are in a remote community, how can you get QR codes? How can you print them out? How can you access them? How can you access multiple currencies? All this feeds in uh, to an environment where there's not that education to provide that. So what can we do to help? How can we create that? How can we give access and lower the barriers of entry to that? And that's what I try to do with the project that I'm going to present with you today. So um, I haven't got uh, incredible slides, uh, but I have got code that works, so you know, <laughs> give and take. Um, <coughs> so one of my first thoughts was, well, why not labeling machines, because that would be a good idea. Uh, you see them, uh, rece the receipt machines, when you go and buy uh, purchase a product, um, you get a print out of a receipt. Now those also have QR codes on, and they're used to scan and do a review of where you've been. I think that would be fantastic. That was my first bit of research. Those machines cost about 500 pounds, so that's instantly out. Yeah, and the labels themselves they cost uh, 25 pounds. Now that's that's a lot of money for us. That's an insurmountable amount of money for someone in the third world. So that that, that just wasn't feasible. So my second option was to think: Well, is there a way that you could print on um, sheets, sheets of paper? Because every country, uh, no matter their, their systems, always have uh, printers, you know, an internet cafe. So was there a way you could do that? So a little bit searching, I managed to find a German company, and they do, they do do that. What they do is they provide labelling for industry. If you move that way, the camera is on. Camera is. 
That's it. You're okay. <laughs> um, they do labeling for industry. One of the things they do is they provide labels so that um, companies can uh, label their products in big warehouses and get to them easy enough. But this is something that could help um, the, uh, the crypto industry because these are weatherproof labels. So obviously we live in, in uh, you know, our, our phones are in sleeves, uh, they're in our pockets, we live in um, sanitized environments most of the time, and there's not much wear and tear. Uh, that's completely different in the third world where there's motorbikes screaming around on the streets and everybody shouting and so forth, and there's dust and, you know, variable um, changing conditions. So I went and bought uh, these sheets. So what was the idea behind this? So, uh, sorry I haven't done a run through of this, so it's a bit off the top of my head. Uh, these sheets are spread out in four columns, uh, um, four columns and 11 rows. Uh, and one of the reasons I chose them is because with cryptocurrencies, uh, those that know cryptocurrencies will know this, those that don't, um, it, it might be new to you, but you have public and private keys. Your, your public keys, you, so the one you give to someone and they can pay you, your private key is something that you retain yourself and it's like your pin code to your credit card, you know, it gives access to all your funds. So you want to retain that. And there's obviously a lot of articles and a lot of people are highly suspicious, you know, they print off their private keys and they shove them down their pants or they give them to their grandma or, you know, or they put them under their shoe and stuff, or, or, or rip them in half and give them to one person and then give another one to another person, which I think is a very good approach because unless you can get those two people to meet, no one can have access to your account. So this is something I was thinking about because in, in the third world, someone can just come up to you, here's a gun, give me your private key. That's a bit of a problem. But if you split those, you can't, you know, no matter how much you want to, to save your life, give away that information. So that's why I chose this sheet. The idea being is you could print QR codes across two rows, and the first row here, between the QR code that you put on your phone, oh, uh, we'll come back to that. The first one being the QR code that you print on your phone, and the second set of codes being ones that are private keys that you can put here and here. By the way, don't worry, um, if you scan these in, you'll just go to DuckDuckGo, so don't worry about it. Um, these ones being your private keys, the idea being that these can be split out, and you have inbuilt redundancy. Redundancy being that, well, let's take an example. Um, I tell you what, let's go, let's go back to that slide previous because I wanted to talk about something about design. Design really heavily factors into this because um, there's a substantial difference in what is required um, in a, a, a third world community where you're trying to exchange information and in a um, highly educated, highly dynamic Western world community where you can use so you know flat design, so many different ways of communicating information. But in in a, in a different environment, I'll give you an example. If you were a worker in India, yeah, and say you live 30 miles outside of uh, Mumbai, and you wanted to get in, you get into work every day on a uh, on a taxi motorcycle. Not a problem. You get into the middle of Mumbai. You're in the middle of the street. Um, there's there's taxis everywhere. You've got to hold your elbows in. Everyone's screaming and shouting. You have to scream at the taxi driver, the taxi driver has to scream at you, and what he wants is payment. Yeah, pay, pay me for the ride, pay me for the ride. How does that lead into design? That's a high pressure environment. That's a high pressure environment where mistakes can be made. So what can you create that removes all ambiguity of what you're dealing with? Because at the moment there's, I don't know, seven and a half thousand cryptocurrencies. They've all got their own logo, they've all got their own thing. I don't have an idea where they're going, you know, some people out here will say, a lot of people don't know, you know, there's a lot of speculation. Some things can get, will to get taken on by the market and some things will get left behind. Yeah? I've, I've used, obviously, Bitcoin here because it's the biggest and largest known and most likely to be adopted uh, across the world. But we've got three designs here. And which one of these ones would you choose or should be, choose, should be chosen to be used in that environment? So we've got a funky design here that's just a little border on the B. Yeah, which looks very cool. That's all right. Then we've got one with no border. Mmm, nice. That, that one's really cool. Then we've got an extremely boring one. It's got a border on it, but it's got a B in the middle. 
Now, after um, representing this to about three, four designers, not, not a huge spectrum of it, you know, granted, um, they, they all said this one. The reason being is with this one, while it's funky and cool, the B can get lost against the background in that split second when you're looking at someone's code. What do you want? What is it? What currency is it? What am I doing? Yeah? With, with that, that leads more um, to, to problems and mistakes being made when you're doing payments. With this one, because there's no border, you can't differentiate between what's a logo and the QR code. But this one stands out because you know this all carries the information, and this in the middle that's bordered off and on a white background is what you're dealing with. And that is how design leads into helping people make the right decisions, especially in environments we don't understand. Yeah? So that, that's why I put that slide in. Um, anyway, so yeah, we'll go forward. Um, and th those are obviously the private keys. Um, I wanted to make a point about this because I, uh, I talked to a couple of my Indian friends and uh, they were saying how, and I've heard this before, how the money in an Indian family is held by the grandparents, you know, by the grandmother and the grandfather. So I was like, great, I'll go and get the WhatsApp version of a grandfather and a grandmother, and then I'll put one here and one here, and then they'll know which one to use. Job done, not a problem. And then the missus came in and goes, what's that? And they're talking through all this, and I show her those, and she goes, you know, don't you think you've made a bit of an assumption there? It's like, well, I've asked, you know, three, four people out of a country of two billion, so I think that's pretty good. And she goes, well, why, why, is there any other way you can convey the fact that these should sit with anybody but yourself? And I thought, that's a very good, um, that's a very good point, because I don't know. You could give this to a friend. You could give this to the next governor. No, that'd be a bad idea. Uh, you could give it to, you know, your mum, your dad. You could give it to, it's up to you who you give these keys to, or the parts of these keys. So again, design, design help you make that decision. Um, I went with uh, this design here, where you've got uh, three people, um, and uh, again, not relying on text, so there's no language barrier, just relying on icons. And you can see that uh, the, this half of this text here, <coughs> this half of your property should go to one person that's behind you, you know, i.e. family, and then the second half of the, um, the key here going to the other person here. I also did a version where I had uh, a lock symbol here, but then that leads to information overload and confusion. Um, if someone's trying to aid adoption, um, they run a community session in, in, in a country and no one's heard of crypto and this is their first introduction and it's got more icons on it than necessary, it's going to lead to longer conversations that the community manager is not going to want to do. There's not that much ambiguity with those two images uh, after they've been explained, you know. Um, so I put those on there and then I put a, a house on here implying that maybe you want to keep uh, this half of your private key at home and the wallet on the upper half here as well, implying that you might want to keep that one um, on you. Uh, the reason being is that these two you can combine and recreate your, your wallet yourself, um, and if your home gets washed away, or you get robbed, and they're not actually after your key, they're after you know, $5, it doesn't matter, that half of that key's gone, you can't rebuild this. You can still go to whoever your friends are, and you've got redundancy, you can rebuild your wallet. Um, and then that leaves this little awkward space here of uh, what you do with that, um, with absolutely no input from anybody. I thought it would be a really good idea to have these as spaces where you could... Um, oh, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, no, no, I just completely forgot this. Right, that's a very good point. If a family, so on the sheet you've got 11 of these, so you can print out five of them. If a family starts adopting Bitcoin and there's five of these, so you've got, um, what's that, three kids and two parents, and say the parents are holding multiple private keys for their kids, their nieces, their nephews, their cousins, how will they be able to differentiate who's is what, or which one belongs to who? That was another issue that, that you know, I suddenly realised, and that can be overcome by making sure there's a unique number on every single one of these. So that when, you know, someone runs home and goes, Mum, 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 where's my private key? I need, you know, I need to get access to my funds. And she's like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know which one it is. As long as you've got the one that's still on the back of your, your phone, or, you know, you've got one from home, and you remember what your number is, she'll be able to look through a stash of half keys, and she can give you the one that's, that's relevant. And that, um, that dawned on me as, uh, as, you know, adoption goes, that'd be quite important. 
And so for the end ones, I thought what would be quite useful is to have um, wallets, you know, because each of these people that have adopted and taken on um, to become essentially a node in the, the crypto world um, want to spread that message, yeah, and uh, they'll want their friends to join them so that they can, it's, you know, it's like how WhatsApp spread, WeChat spread, Dropbox, Facebook, they all have elements um, Hotmail at the bottom, sent with Hotmail. iOS, the, when you send an email from your iPhone, sent from iOS. You know, they all have little ways of making sure you know that their product was used in that transaction. So this gives people that have come on board and want to promote this ecosystem the chance to put this on their, their shop or put it on the bottom of their phone, you know, and, and hand it around to their friends. So um, that was the idea. Uh, that's, this is all create. this isn't... Uh, me cutting and pasting, by the way, this is all created with code. So the wonderful thing is, is, um, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, okay, let me just, uh, I'll show you a couple of things. If, it, if it's alright, is that right, Stephen? So, let's get rid of that. Oops. So. Have a look at these. These are the um, yeah. these are the sheets that I got. So remember, these are for, purely for industrial labour, but uh, I've kind of um, co-opted to, to use in this as well. Um, and what we've got here, uh, one of the things you have to realise is that. <coughs> One of the things you have to realise is that one of these pages, so um, this on eBay, now you've, in bulk you probably get it cheaper, uh, it's 25 sheets and it's £12.50. It's a simple mat, that's 50p a sheet. Eh, not a problem considering you get five wallets off it. Um, but that's quite a lot when you, um, say you order four, that's £2. I don't know, that's probably quite a lot of money, you know, and it's been sent to you. You get your four sheets. Oh, cool. I can now go and print my wallet. First one goes through, it's skewed, you can't use it. The, the QR codes are overlapping and it's not working. Put another one through, get stuck on the, on, the, on the reels of the printer, yeah? A lot of problems can go wrong when you put these through a, a laser jet printer or inkjet. Can't remember which one. Um, so, how can we help with that? Well. If they're doing this in an internet calf, obviously they're going to have a printer. If they've got a printer, then they're obviously going to have A4 paper. So, when they get this, uh, by the way, this will be created as software that's freely distributed. Anybody can go and get it, and then they can create their own codes, as long as they get this paper from me at £50 a sheet. So, um, if, we, if, we, if you look here, you can see that I've got currently no documents in here that I, I can use to currently show you. If I go here and I run this um, script, let's create a bit more space here, like that. so we can see the stuff happen, because it's cool when you see stuff happen. Right, so, ru oh, yeah, let's run that. Okay, so we run, this creates us a test page. So, if we open up here, you can see we have got a PDF. Um, we've got a PNG, but we've got a P does everyone hands up who knows what a PDF is? <laughs> yeah, well, that's enough for me to carry on talking. Yeah, that's good. Um, that creates you a PDF that you can then go and print on a simple sheet of A4 paper that costs you 5p, 3p, 2p, half p in your internet cafe. The idea being is then you can overlap that with your 50p sheet and see what offset you need to make sure that the two um, line up and that you're, you know, you're good to go. You can then run the script and go and print to your heart's delight and, and be comfortable in the fact that you're not wasting money as things go wrong, yeah? So, but do you want to pass up to the third one? Okay, so that's that. So you go away hunky-dory, brilliant. Right, we've got one there, let's go with that. Um, and then once you've got your uh, your, your sheet and it's all lined up and so forth, you can then go ahead and you can execute um, your 
uh, you can then go and run the generator that will create all of this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it with the help command first of all. Now, don't be too scared. I'm not going to go properly into code or anything. I'm just going to show you that, that, that anyone with a basic understanding can, can get this up and running, as it were. And I'll show you some of the simple commands that you can, you can pass into it. So if I run it with help, you'll see that it says, uh, script to create A4 sheets of crypto wallets. Could be letter or anything. I don't know why that's in there. Help thing. And then you've got coin. Coin to create the wallet for. So what you can do with this lovely bit of software is you can see we've got a coins folder in here. If you double click on that, you can actually put additional coins in here. And you only need four things, if I'm right. So we'll go and look at the uh, bit. I'm working on the dash one at the moment, so I can't show you that, unfortunately. Um, all you need is this. Let's have a look at that one. So all you need is this logo, yeah, which will go in the middle of your QR codes. And this file here, which will say, um, where the, the coin come from, it comes from. So there are uh, seven and a half thousand, eight and a half thousand cryptocurrencies. I keep walking out if you want to. Um, there are a lot of cryptocurrencies out there. Now all, not all, well, a vast majority of these coins haven't got their own blockchain. They, they haven't got developers or the money to be able to create that. So they create off other blockchains, yeah? Um, there are uh, just under 300 masternode coins, and they're based off two code bases, Dash and Pivx, predominantly. Yeah? So the idea is here is you can then create uh, print wallets for uh, derivative coins. So as long as you know that um, smart money is based off Dash, you can put in here, up at the top, the parent coin is Dash, and then it will print you Dash ones. It'll work perfectly fine with whatever smart coin is or whatever it is, but it helps you make sure that the way the the keys being generated is correct for that, that blockchain and for that coin, as it were. And then you, you have wallets, which are the links to the, the Android and Apple wallets. It's all, it's all very simple, yeah? Um, so, uh, I just want to point that out. And then you can do sheets as well down here, and you can put a number in that. Uh, that doesn't work at the moment, still working on that as well. So, and so you can create 25 sheets, create as many as you want, yeah? If, if you're a community manager in your country and you're in a major metropolitan city and you're holding a meetup, man, bang out, you know, 40 of these. What's that? That's 200 people that, that if they turn up to your event and are interested in a completely new monetary system, one with absolutely no barriers, and you've commun communicated that and they're hungry for it, you've got the means to provide it there and then, yeah? And you've got those sheets to hand out. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm, I'm just going to do two more things because I'm conscious I'm talking a lot. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, you can see that I've deleted all the stuff there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this generator with no input and this is how you normally run it to create a Bitcoin wallet. So Bitcoin wallets as it were. So run it there and you can stri see straight away we've got a crypto sheet output which is a PDF. Double click on that. And you can see we've got those. Um, to you can see that we've got the public keys here that can be um, taken off, and then we've got the private keys here that can be split up. And then we've got those URLs that are related to the the apps for for different mobile ecosystems that can then can be downloaded and used. And if you want to know what that looks like, I, after two months. That is what it looks like on a sheet of that paper. So those can now be cut up along the line, along strip lines. They can be folded in on themselves and then sold to people in market stalls. Um, and they can be printed up in their, um, their thousands. Uh, one thing I will mention, I don't know if it's relevant, but some people might, some people that are more advanced might be thinking about this, is how can you do this all offline? Um, the private keys, uh, you have entropy and you feed into them, the, their length is so long that it's 60 to the power of 62. So I don't know what that works out of, but it's probably one of those things where it's more than particles of sands on beaches around the world or something. So it means you can run this into eternity and you will always end up with fresh addresses. Yeah, That's how you can run this offline. So if, you're, if you want to help your community and you want to bring them online to a new economy but they're not in a major economic hub, 
you can use something like this, print these out for family members or your community, and if you have the other, obviously other thing is how do you get apps onto their phone. If you have a simple SD card, if you're equipped with these sheets and a simple SD card with the applications on, obviously not an iPhone, then you can go out into these communities, you put an app on it, you put stickers on the back of the phone, they can have redundancy with their private keys with their family members, and they can also widen their circle and their influence and start to use it to pay for goods and, and develop that community as it were. So that's the, that's the idea. Cool, thanks for your time. Thanks, and that's just one example of the kind of things that we see. As you know, some of you attend regularly, we do see some innovations. Um, fantastic, love that, especially in the third world. And we had a good one last time as well. And so this is, I think, the turning point from what I was saying earlier, just to go on from that a bit, is I think that we're kind of, we're not getting so much stifling obstruction as we used to get now. I think some of the people within the departments um, in government at different places are kind of spotting the opportunity, but there is an opportunity, and they're trying to develop that and come and get involved with groups like this and to try and see what's there and see if, you know, separate the, the I don't know, I don't want to say a swear word, but from dirty pudding, you know, follow what's good and what's bad and, and develop and, and help to try and develop good things with the communities that are doing good things. So with that in mind, I want to introduce a very special next guest who's come this evening to speak to the group. Uh, Jonathan Hughes from the Welsh Government. Could we give him... Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Um, if I volume goes in, I've got a bit of a problem with me luggo at the moment, so bear with me. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Gavin, who I met before Christmas, who invited me along. Um, just a bit about me. Um, I work for the Welsh Government. I'm part of a financial professional services sector team which, and our role is to one, attract new investment into Wales, new companies coming in, work with companies that are already here to grow and sustain themselves, and create a business environment in which we can all thrive. Bit of a big ask, but that's where we are. Uh, things are sort of changing, but what I wanted to do today is, look, just give you a feel for what's happening in terms of Welsh Government and the direction of travel in terms of our economic development priorities and why blockchain is a part of that. I'd also like just to make a point at the moment, I'm talking about blockchain and not Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin isn't regulated at the moment, that makes it very difficult for governments to actually get involved for a number of region, reasons, mainly for some of the things you've mentioned, some of the poor publicity and perhaps it being a tool for speculation rather than being seen as a tool for speculation rather than what it is, a transfer of currency assets. But in terms of the concept of what it does underneath it and in terms of what we call digital assets, then that's a different story. So we have an economic action plan. Uh, it's a weighty tone. Uh, but basically what it says is about growing prosperity across the whole of Wales, future-proofing our economy in a socially just and environmentally sustainable manner. And I'm going to talk much too much about the future-proofing agenda. Uh, there's a sort of concept of economic victimhood in Wales, in the sense that uh, actually we've never been on the forefront of anything. Um, and I quote a historian, Eric Hobsbawm, who's very noted, uh, who said industrialisation that was something that was done to the Welsh rather than something that they actually actively participated in. Now, Hosborn was a Marxist, and sometimes he could be accused of his facts meeting his theories, but if you look at the uh, history of the Industrial Revolution in Wales, certainly in part of Wales I come from Pontypool, the Hanburys came from Sussex, other, the Iron Masters came from Staffordshire and other parts of the UK. So, in, uh, Marquis of Butte in Cardiff. So, what we've seen over the years is that Wales has been good for resources, but it's never had that intellectual capital. In the early days of the Industrial Revolution, that was imported from Cornwall and Staffordshire. So, 
Where we're looking forward is we need to develop that capability if we're going to be a sustainable economy. Because Brexit aside, and obviously that's something that the Welsh Government is very uh, <coughs> concerned about, there is mass rapid change happening in terms of technology. And we need to embrace that to prosper economically. So uh, I'm going to talk very much in terms of financial services because it's what I sort of understand, or rather can remember enough to bluff because I started my career in insurance and before that a little bit in banking, um, which just tells you that I didn't really know what I wanted to do as a kid because no one goes into insurance willingly uh, or knowingly. Um, blockchain. We've been aware of it for quite some time. It's been on our radar, but when we first came across it, say, four or five years ago, when we were talking to people at level 39, we didn't really know much about it. And also, they also seemed an awful lot of hype. It's going to change the world. I'm old, Gandalf, and I don't believe it. Um, but if you look over the last year or so, um, I mean, I read the financial technology papers, Things are happening. I know of an insurance company not so far away from here that's adopted blockchain in some of its processes. I know that there is a high street bank whose new digital offerings will have blockchain as part of it. I know things are happening. So, I also know that universities in South Wales, certainly from Swansea across to Newport, developing their capabilities in blockchain technology. I know, for example, Cardiff Metropolitan University has got a project with uh, the company's house to look at how they verify and, and the integrity of the data. And there are other discrete projects as well with someone who delivers banking platforms. We are in Wales, um, believe it or not, a hub for financial technologies. There are three companies within five miles of here that deliver banking platforms internationally. Some of which are into part of, uh, one of which is an center of engineering excellence for Fiserv, which is a massive US financial technology provider. They deliver digital transformation for global banks. It happens here. The comparison sites, they were the big disruptors in the insurance market and the way we bought insurance that happened here. There are lots of digital offerings happening. Now we need to embrace that and build upon that. And what I wanted to talk about really is what some of our thinking is at the moment around those financial technologies. And I appreciate that blockchain is sector agnostic, but I'm talking about what I know, or I think I know. Um, what our UK government has appointed a gentleman called Richard Theo as our fintech envoy. Um, now, Richard Theo works uh, set up Active Quote, I don't know if you've heard of them down in Panath, but also most recently Wealthify, which is a robo investment company. He's been challenged with creating um, a fintech hub, call it what you will, here in Wales, because the UK government sees this, sees financial technology be as something in which we are preeminent in the UK, and also something that shouldn't just take place in London. Not that it does, it's just that we've been very poor in Wales in terms of shouting what we actually do. So, by bringing together innovators, corporates, academics, and ourselves as government, what we're looking to do is pull together um, a private sector-led initiative, call it what you will, which might include accelerators, might include funding streams, would include, include uh, academic innovation opportunities, all these different things that will promote innovation, develop new products, and keep us at the forefront of new technologies. So, how that's going to work, I don't know, because we're still in very early stages of that. And Really, we're taking a back seat and trying to pull people together who know what they're talking about so that they can, pull it to, can, can guide us in that. Because one of the one things I know about life and economic development is if public bodies say, here's something, it's good for you, it don't work. So therefore, we need to be more collaborative and we need to pull people together to guide us on this. 
Where does blockchain fit in with that? Well, it's a part of the whole thing. We want to focus on data science, we want to focus on AI. Blockchain is going to be part of our future, regardless of cryptocurrencies, regardless of anything. People are embracing it, so we need to be part of that. So, when I met with Stephen and Gavin before Christmas, we threw some ideas about it. a blockchain academy, maybe a blockchain innovation centre, maybe all sorts of things. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to come here today and perhaps talk to you was to try and get some feedback from yourselves because actually blockchain is a bit under the radar. Um, I said earlier when we first came on this journey we didn't really know what was going on in Wales and we still probably don't. But this is a perfect opportunity for me to actually get to stand in front of people who actually do know and actually involved with things. So, on that point, what I'd like to do is just sit back and listen and see if anyone's got any thoughts on what we sh might be doing and what you think would be appropriate. I'm all ears. <laughs> Except for the one that isn't working. <laughs> so, is there, you say you're in the stages of developing this platform? Yeah, I mean, at the, at, the, at the moment, we're pulling some plans together on what we need to do to do it. But that's not going to be set in stone. I mean, we could look at a fintech accelerator. We might even look at a blockchain academy. We might look at a number of things, depending on what people say we should be doing, on what the opportunity is. We've got a city growth deal in South Wales, around the Cardiff City region. And the biggest emphasis in that is around innovation. Now, I'm not saying we're going to fund everything, but there's money about for the right projects. But also, we need that, what they call the triple helix of business, government, and academia to work on that. But it's still in early stages. But coming here today is about listening to some of your views and some of the barriers that you think are there. Because I know, Stephen, you, you mentioned before that you felt that there were things that were, there, there were barriers, there, and that yeah. people would, but I mean, my, my point of view at the moment is actually, people are waking up to blockchain and the possibilities. There are a number of um, op, large corporates out there who are not seeing um, blockchain as a threat or innovation as a threat. There is a phrase called frenemies whereby actually they'll take these people under their wing and actually join in in the innovation. So it'd be interesting to get some feedback. Excellent, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, there's a lot going on in the fintech world and I think a lot of people are worried about the legislation of it all. And, you know, well, this is what we'd like to do, what, what are, they doing? are we legally allowed to do that? Or, yes, we can. Or... Is it a case of, well, we're not sure, but maybe next year they'll say yes or no. So I think everyone's a little bit hesitant or reticent to, yeah, I think to know what to do. So would there be an idea that the Welsh government say, like, well, go ahead and do it and we'll, we'll work along with you with that? I think one of the benefits we have been in Wales is some of the big public sector data assets are here. And the Office of National Statistics is clearly working on what is ethical use of data. Um, okay, I've ruled out cryptocurrencies until FCA actually comes up with some regulation um, because it's probably not appropriate for us for reasons you probably understand. Um, but in terms of digital assets and use of blockchain, where it's that regulation and it meets those regulations, then surely we'll run, we'll work with good projects that have commercial outcomes. I hope that sort of answers your question. Yes? Uh, so I like the idea of bringing mining back to Wales, so it's working with the Uh, that's beyond, not beyond my pay grade and my, my care. Um, I think it's something that the last one we could invest in essentially. Strategically, we obviously need, we've got such good infrastructure, we've got tides that will... Yeah, it's like a great sort of thing. I think it's a win, yeah. Yeah, so there's a mining cryptocurrency, yeah. 
Yeah, um, Stephen explained this to me before Christmas, and um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I can't really answer that question at the moment. Okay. Apologies, yes. <laughs> and you were saying everyone's waiting for the FCA to do some regulation on Bitcoin. Now, it seems like India or China are more on like, the forefront of like, doing the regulation uh, towards you know, the situation, but then, you know, when is, to which, what is your guess, like, when would the FCA, is it one, two years, you reckon, it's going to be some sort of uh, rules uh, on this, or is it just going to be like, like it is forever, like, what do you think, like, um, five years, it be rules? I can't really give an opinion on a UK government department, because obviously I'm Welsh government, but... If you look at what they've done in terms of creating the sandboxes for experimentation and working with the regulator, uh, my guess is that they, they're serious about it. Um, however, again, I can't speak about that because, again, it's not. It seems like yeah, everyone's waiting for someone to make rules. This is what's going on. Yeah, is it India, China, or America is going to make the rules or something? So do you think, is this something in Wales, could we make our own, could we make our own sandbox if we want, could we have the free to do that? Um, if we're looking to create a sandbox, there's, so that's, a, that, that's something for discussion. And again, you know, we, we clearly like to have better links with some other UK government organisations. Um, an FCA sandbox would be something that we would think to be a good thing if it were based in Wales. And again, if it were linked to some other government department, say perhaps the Office of National Statistics. Uh, but again, yeah, I can't really comment on the FCA because it's not within my jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. But I think you take it for the fact that they have gone down the route of sandboxes mm -hmm. with the regulator, that it's not something that they're saying they're <laughs> their cryptocurrencies go away. I'm happy with no regulation. <laughs> As a government, we need regulation. But I think yes, what's happening is, is perhaps there's countries around the world, jurisdictions around the world, that are sort of welcoming it. We're not quite sure what's going on, but come in, let's have a, let's have a play with it, let's, let's make some money out of it, um, and see what happens. And they're going to attract uh, the innovation. They already are. Yeah, it's it's just, I think, you know, just to say, I think you know, that was what I was trying to emphasize was the fact that we are so well connected, so well informed in Wales, really, on the subject. We are for a long time. There's a lot of people involved for a long time. But not having clear legislation, I think the fear would be a lot for that. You're not doing anything wrong, just not. There's no legislation, so you know, even the way you stand, that kind of insecurity is stifling. It's a real problem. Some of the invasions, I know some of these guys, I just call them like that, groundbreaking you know, uh, innovation that these guys come up with. I know that they might have been stifled because of location more than anything else. The existing infrastructure, I don't think they agree with that, but they probably would to some degree. So I think if we were able to have some kind of sandboxing or clear legislation in Wales or just the free reign to try things, you know, um, maybe watch us have the observed or hand in hell and some kind of uh, give us more freedom to try these things. Because there are a lot of ideas that we mentioned this evening as well. They're quite groundbreaking. Yeah, I mean, as Wales is a devolved nation, there's some things that we have oversight of and responsibility for, and other things we don't. And financial services regulation is not one. But um, it has been something on, that we have, would have liked to have done to have an FCA sandbox here. And, you know, if we're looking at digital assets, and how to transfer them. Because again, you know, there, there, there are lots of different applications. Cryptocurrency may be one, uh, but there are others which have been discussed. I know there's a company somewhere in Cardiff that uses blockchain to, to distribute aid payments. You know, it's, it's, it's the same technologies. So it's about how we use that capability do things in a way that, if it's us, we're involved with it, well, it, it, it fits in with the regulatory environment um, and, and solves real life problems. But I think, you know, the cryptocurrency regulation is something that I can't really get into. 
But if you have ideas that are crossover from cryptocurrency into the mainstream, then sure enough, if they have impact and they solve people's problems, then they're it will attract funding and it will attract resources. So, I, just kind of a, a comment. I um, also happen to sit on the British Blockchain Association, and so we kind of um, question all of our members what they're looking for, what their stumbling blocks are, and basically, it's a non profit to help them. And Quite honestly, even there's obviously very educated people in this room that are working on projects, that's fine. But I think in general though, take out regulation, which I also agree is a massive suffocation for everybody because everyone's going to Gibraltar, Malta, Island Man, whatever, to do their projects. But I think if we could also, you talked about the platform, but also figure out a way to help understanding and education so, uh, like, even here today, I talk to people, and they and they like they've heard of blockchain, but they don't know what to do with it, or they think that they can do something with it with their business, but they don't really know. Or let's say even if there's a startup and they know how to do the technology, they have got the good idea, but they don't know anything about the legal side, or they don't know anything about the finance side, or they don't need any know anything about the marketing side. A lot of people that I've worked with that are trying to build blockchain companies just want a place to network and actually talk to like-minded people. So today it's easy, okay, there's a whole bunch of us. But you walk out of this room and you walk down the high street in Cardiff and you talk about blockchain, people look at you like if you've got three heads. So just to even have someone to come and talk and say, oh, do you know a lawyer that can actually help me understand whether this is a you know, a commodity, an asset, a currency, or do you know if I do this, you know, whether I'm going to go to jail tomorrow, or, you know, even people just, a lot of people just want basic questions answered and having a forum for networking or even case studies. So, you know, I really appreciate today that there was a case study, but just to talk about, okay, well, we've actually done this. So I think that also with, with blockchain, you'll see that a lot of, especially if you go to the conferences, a lot of people talk about this, 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 and this. But when you actually try to dig in who's actually doing something or who's actually got a, a successful case study, there aren't that many of them around. So highlighting the case studies, but I, all the members that we have at the VBA is, is about networking and education especially for the C-suites as well. So there's a lot of C-suites out there that are, to be honest, scared to say that they don't actually know what blockchain is. So it's kind of providing a safe, easy platform for them to learn as well, because I think if you break some of those barriers down, then it helps all of us. So I've been on projects where it's been canned because the big bosses just were too scared and didn't really understand what blockchain was and confused it with Bitcoin and money laundering and terrorism and all that bad stuff. And that's education. If they were educated, I'm pretty sure my <coughs> project would still be going. So, sorry for the long ramble, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, I think on the one point, just to separate the support for individuals, in Wales we do have a startup programme uh, which provides individual one-to-one -one support for the new entrepreneurs which can help them, one, develop their business concept, build their business plans, apply for funding, um, and uh, specialist so business, business and legal advice, depending on their aspirations. Um, for example, I think there's, is it Link? Link, um, uh, which is a blockchain-based uh, payment system. Don't ask me any more than that. Uh, because I was going to say at the beginning of it, what I know about how blockchain works, you can write on the back of a stamp, but I do know what the benefits are. But anyway, this is a, this is a young man who's been helped to develop his, he's got this, let's say, this blockchain-based uh, payment system, instant payments, and lots of different wallets, and things that are a bit beyond me, but he is getting individual one-to-one -one support and access to specialists in that field. If someone has got a good idea that has got is commercially viable, 
that will create employment, that will create wealth within Wales, then there is support for them. On the other hand, in terms of the C-suite, I mean, I was interested to look at, uh, there was a blockchain survey done by Deloitte uh, last year, uh, across the whole of, um, well, globally, I think, um, and it was interesting that across most of the sectors, most of the major businesses in the, in, in the UK are actually looking quite closely at what blockchain can do for their business. Uh, which is and, and are in preparation of projects, which is quite interesting. What well, also actually was quite I found really very interesting is that the, the region that was lagging behind was actually the United States, which is quite interesting. But I think attitudes are changing. Um, I do agree. There are opportunities to um, highlight the benefits of blockchain. And, we want to call that distributed ledger technology. Um, and that's something that can be discussed, I think. Uh, next. Any more questions? Well, it might be blockchain DLT, but maybe talk about Bitcoin and then the spin offs from that. I think the best thing that Wales could do for itself to aid all of those is, is picking up what you said there is, is education. I think that's the key thing. Uh, but I don't know whether or not that's something that can be built into to what you guys plan on doing. So it's going, I, I mean, I'm not really talking about academia within, within university levels, but even younger ages than that. Whereas in some way, shape or form, they're exposed to the cryptocurrencies and the possibilities that, that can come from it. I think, you know, the, the huge developments, if they happen in the next 10, 20 years, we probably don't like kids who are in school now in the next year. And you see other countries like Malta becoming a blockchain island and things like that. And you do, do wonder is there something different Wales could do? Um, not just encouraging businesses, but as in just educating people on the sector as, as well. Yeah. Um, that's a big question that I can answer. Um, clearly, understanding <coughs> financial affairs is something that's being built into our curriculum. Um, where cryptocurrencies fit, fit in with that, I couldn't really tell you at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I, but again, the opportunities and the capabilities of what like blockchain technologies can bring, yes, I think that there's, there's room for, for education and awareness. And I'm saying kids, it might even be, be adults and corporates, you know, is, is, is there something we can do to encourage corporates to come kind and of learn about blockchain and Bitcoin technology? And, I, I think there is. I, I think there is. I think it would probably be best, as again, that partnership between government, business, entrepreneurs and uh, academia, because I think there's a fair bit of knowledge transfer that needs to take place, that could take place. Um, I think I'm aware that one university is planning to do a series of short courses on blockchain, um, although I don't that might just be a vicious rumour. Um, but again, it, it is on people's, it is, I'm getting the feel that it is of interest to people now. As I say, clients I work with, my businesses, a number of them are adopting blockchain within their processes for, for, for the benefits of increasing productivity, reducing risk, eliminating fraud. But again, I think. It's, I think it's maybe there pointed out, it, the, the whole, the, the, the issue around cryptocurrency speculation, the accusations around anti-money laundering and not knowing your customer and so on, have clouded issues. And I think it's be very difficult for governments to, wherever they might be, to endorse those things until there was a proper regulatory framework. I suppose that's where I'm coming from, is in, I understand that one day, hopefully a switch will be gone, it's okay, we can endorse it, we can talk about it. I hope that Wales is in a position which gets to that date, that we've done everything we can to maximise and exploit that opportunity. Yeah, and I, I, I think... That's why I, I hearing you coming here and talk to us today makes me think that we are, you know, we stand a good chance. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there are huge opportunities I, you know, that, that, that are being... They're out there, I think, 
and from what I've read from the financial press and from various different third party sources that the technology can bring whether to financial services, whether to agriculture, whether to manufacturing supply chains, to the lot. And I think we in Wales need to be able to have that technological capability as a starting point to be able to exploit those opportunities and that innovation happens here in Wales. And that, I think, is our aspiration. So, and you would have to do that for us, and have to work for us to you. I mean, you know, if something you're talking that you did for it to happen, then you would support it. Yeah, I, I think if you look at what we've done uh, in terms of part, other parts, and again, I'm talking about financial services here because it's what I know. Yeah, the regulation is saying, you know, blockchain and the um, For example, many of the financial services companies in in around Cardiff, said, so, you know, we have difficulty attracting people on graduate fast streams and so on. We have a difficulty in developing, attracting people who are going to be senior managers one day. So between us, uh, our, the Welsh Contact Centre Forum, the University of South Wales, we've created a very innovative two-year programme where uh, bright young graduates have four six-month placements at companies such as Admiral, Principality Building Society, LexisNexis, um, Optimum Credit and, and the comparison sites um, whereby they actually go and do an MSc in Financial Services Management which is a learn by doing process. So their master's degree is all based on completing pro projects. That's been an unmitigated success. That's being replicated in, by, in terms of data science. So that's been implemented this year, again, with the University of South Wales. We've also got a National Cyber Academy, we've got a National Software Academy. Uh, but, and also, I think, to be fair to our universities, they are responding very much around, certainly in technology, about this very practical application. Now, I think blockchain is a little bit behind the curve, perhaps. I don't know, but that's the discussions we're having, because we've seen... We've been to speak to Cardiff University, Swansea University, we're seeing the University of South Wales very soon, and Cardiff Met. And it's about how those universities include those concepts and that, that, that hands-on learning in their programmes so that our graduates here are the best qualified, or the best, how can I put it, are ready to readier than any other graduates anywhere else in the country to start a job and be productive from day one, and that's really the aspiration. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. Is is isn't it um, uh, that the assembly is looking for new universities to encourage it to move it along? I think we we started off with the software academy and the cyber academy, which. One's with the University of South Wales, one was with Cardiff University. And I think, you know, if I look at <coughs> some of the other, certainly the ones I've looked at, Swansea University, even Swansea, yeah, uh, I can never say, University of Wales, Trinity, St. David, University of South Wales, whatever, in a lot of these areas like data science, AI, and again, I think, well, I'm just now finding blockchain, they are responding to real world needs. And I've been very impressed at the progress that they've made over the last few years. Very impressed indeed. Because uh, when I started in economic development 20 years ago, I didn't think they were that responsive and that willing to engage as they are now. Yeah, um, so I just, I just graduated from the National Software Academy, right. as I mentioned. And you said you work with the Welsh Government. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you approached the National Software Academy and tried to get, they they do these projects so frequently. I don't know if you guys have done this already, um, but if you approached them and said we want to do a prototype blockchain project with you, they would probably do one. Um, yeah. Not that I don't know if you know this already, but 
Yeah, if, you did, if you did approach them and you say we want to do a blockchain project and you came up with just a basic idea for a prototype for a blockchain technology, um, that would probably happen just later. Like, so yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, the Software Academy has been, on, again, a mitigating success. I'm glad to hear that you, uh, you obviously uh, are promoting it from your own experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just because I wish when I was there I could work on a blockchain project. Yeah. It's just we never got anyone come in. Yeah, I mean, again, I, but I think there's, it's, again, it's about awareness of the capabilities and the awareness, I think, yeah. I can talk to businesses about the National Software Academy, but unless you trawl through sometimes um, university websites or the, 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 the Welsh press, you wouldn't really know much about it. Um, so therefore, that, those opportunities, if you have ideas, if you want proof of concepts done, they won't build your website, but they will do you a proof of concept yeah. to give the students um, a that hands-on experience of development again, again supported by the, the academic staff as well and you have direct involvement so there are all those opportunities to work with you, students yeah yeah so, you can make that happen you could uh, if you approach them with proof of concept even as the Welsh, Welsh government I don't know if you need a business I don't, I don't think you do you could potentially just make that happen obviously if you but you I don't know if you need some people within Washington to give you that idea for what that would be but I probably would. Sorry, uh, <laughs> sorry, you. I think going on from this, and what you mentioned is you, you talk about the link payment system. It's very consistent, but it's, it's not out there yet, and it's sort of not promoted. And what we're probably all trying to say is that lots of crypto ideas, there's lots of blockchain ideas. Could Wales sort of promote itself? So we're doing really well here. Yeah, I think um, for us it's about having the case studies, it's about having the evidence to put out to the world. I mean, I think we, our aspiration, and we believe that we, we have um, evidence to support it, is that we are a strong centre for financial technology in the UK, outside of London. We would love to be, this is a blockchain centre to be to be proud of and come here for your innovation, bring your capital, bring your ideas, and let's build it here. Gentleman at the back. So you are looking for basically a project so that you can attract skilled people, have them practice the, the art of working blockchains and have the <coughs> facilities so that spin-offs can happen from that. Uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, uh, I mean, it, I say it's, it's early days at the moment. But the, you just blockchain yourself? <laughs> <laughs> or you just blockchain Welsh government, Welsh local government, the NHS? Why don't you just, you, you've got money to throw at something, why don't you just throw it at those things, get, create the jobs that you want to create in the centre within your own bureaucratic institutions? And then, you know, they'll get bored in those institutions, be skilled in the, in the job that they're doing, and then spin off and create, you know, uh, whatever, you know, spin-offs and startups and all the rest of it, you know. Yeah, I think I, 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 just, um, Steve and I had a discussion before Christmas in that uh, there are a group of assembly members looking, leading a task force to look at the digitisation and digital transformation of Welsh public services. Um, and I suggested that Stephen contact them um, to, 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 um, to discuss the benefits of what this technology might bring. Um, but again, I can't really comment on behalf of the Welsh Government, particularly as this is going out on video. Can I just say, it's okay with the time reasons, if I cut that to one last question. There's a gentleman there. Uh, the last question is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> How many researchers are supporting the American for the universities? Sorry? How many researchers you are supporting for the uh, blockchain topic or the blockchain topics? 
At the moment, I can only think of two. Um, and that's through the Knowledge Transfer Partnerships, which is UK-wide. Um, but again, we would want to see more of that. I think whether it be blockchain, AI, or any of the other technologies uh, or applications of technology that are going to affect the, um, the delivery of services and indeed um, the other sectors as well. Because uh, I think, you know, as I say, our aspiration is that intellectual ca ca capital is here in Wales and developed here in Wales rather than elsewhere and then imposed upon us. So the whole point of the city deal, the whole point of what we're talking about in terms of fintech Wales, whatever that might be, is to enable that innovation, enable those ideas and create commercial benefit and employment benefit. And in are we, are we uh, known to the Open Enemy project? Is working also working on this uh, project? Like Open Enemy project? No, I don't know that name. Last question, anybody? That was that. Uh, question. What help or what contribution has been done to help stimulate the private sector economy? In what sense? Um, I think if I go back to some cultural and historical issues, Wales has tended to be a place of resources and for delivery rather than innovation. Um, now, many commentators have noted that, this is not my opinion, but there is a broad agreement from all sides of the political spectrum that this is something that needs to change, it is changing. Um, but as I said, you know, I know of an organisation here whereby actually this, one of the students on the Financial Services Graduate Programme actually developed their innovation strategy of which blockchain was part of it. So these things are happening, it's just we need to do more of it <coughs> and we also need to make sure that those innovations happen here and the, the return on investment happens here as well, rather than it being exported somewhere else. Oh, I'm sorry to cut off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Can I just say, before we back and forth, I think what we've got, this is what I'm trying to say in the future, is because I've got to say, not, not stupid, but brave, brave Jonathan wants to come today, because government people don't usually come to Bitcoin meetups, set up the phone, and take questions. So I really, a real appreciation. <laughs> And we can all put a name on a face and everything else. If we do have genuine innovation, something there are always controls and people are going to look at it. But if it, if it tests the test and it and it stands the test, then I love to think that there are people support us. So please call me Stephen at CryptoBuild.io and um, or Jonathan. I'm sorry, you find Jonathan Hughes online. He's going to be easy to find. But Stephen at CryptoBuild.io. I'd like to get involved if I can help in any way. Team you up with some other people who are thinking along the similar lines, maybe build some teams, anything like that. Please just give me a call because that's what I'm here for. You know, I'm looking forward to that, and obviously, I'm going to contact you as much as I can and see if we can uh, get something more out of this. We can keep it up. It's the beginning, not the end, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so well, thanks for it.